Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm going to show you error, errors in the Bible. E-R-R-O-R-S. Errors in the Bible. Well, are there errors in the Bible? The King James? Or is it just ungodly men that say there are errors in the Bible. You know, famous people like James White. Uh, those of you that like James White, why don't you watch him debate the Muslims where the Muslims say, well, you know, uh, Muhammad was a greater prophet than Jesus because he came afterwards and he gave us the Quran because the Bible has errors. Okay, so... And then James White will say, well, yeah, the Bible does have errors, but we know what they are so we can correct them. What? So basically, James White is agreeing with the Muslims that the Bible has errors. Well, James White, maybe you should read the uh, Quran and preach the Quran. I don't know. But uh, the way I look at it is this. If the Lord has no preserved word of God, then he is a failure and Satan wins. Plain and simple, if God was unable to preserve his word, then God the Father is a failure and Satan has won. I mean, just the fact that there are 666 different versions of the Bible proves to me alone that one of them has to be right and all the rest are fraudulent. Because let's face it, if, if every Bible was corrupted, there wouldn't be a purpose to put 666 different versions of the Bible. So those who tell you that the Bible is mistranslated, they're almost always, my opinion, unbelievers and Satanists. There's a guy named Henry Thayer. He had a lexicon, which is what they use to tell you what words mean. He was a Unitarian. And he did not believe in the deity of Christ. What does that mean? He doesn't believe that Christ was God come in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. And his word definitions will reflect that. Um, and then others just claim, well, you know, the Bible has errors. Uh, but, you know, just because you do not understand something doesn't make it an error. Like, there's a lot of people in the so-called Christian identity movement, and honestly, I, I, I doubt if most of them are even truly saved in the Lord, born of the Holy Spirit. I, I just I just don't see it. I don't see the fruit. Um, but uh, they uh, will tell you that the word Gentile is a mistranslation. Granted, the word Gentile just is the same root word that they translate the word nation. Sometimes it was talking about heathen nations. Sometimes it was talking about Israel. So, uh, well, the thing is, when they were talking about Abraham in Israel, they used the word nation. You uh, seems like almost always. But when they were referring to things that they weren't, where they were forced where they were not forced to use the word nation, they used the word Gentile. An example of this would be where God promised Abraham he would be the father of many nations. Well, if, if they would have used Gentile, they would have said, well, Abraham, you're going to be the father of many Gentiles. But that wouldn't have made sense to most people, so they used the word nation. But I don't think it's an error. I think the Lord wanted and had his people to dig in the word and find out 
the real thing, the real deal. Find it out. Honestly, I mean, let's face it. There was, uh, when, when the Lord was speaking to the people in parables, and the disciples came to him and asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? Now, I'm paraphrasing here, but we'll go back and read the whole thing. He says, unto you it is, known, uh, it is, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them it is not given. There was a lot of people who followed Christ around. Why? For they, they wanted the bread and the fish. They didn't want to go to work that day. Hey, I'll listen to this guy. He's going to feed us, you know. Same thing with Africa. You know, you got white missionaries running to Africa and their own neighbors here in America don't even know the gospel. They won't even bother to walk next door and talk to their neighbor about the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they'll fly halfway across the world to go talk to some tribe in Africa. I met a girl that did that. She went to Korea. Honestly, I think she was just using the church for a, um, what would you, a plane ticket to go visit another country. Because I talked to her neighbor, and, and he says, what, she's an evangelist? Really? I, I never knew that. I mean, she never even went next door and talked to her neighbor about Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, but she's going to fly to Korea. Really? Huh. Go figure that one out. What, all the way, all the all the people in America are saved? You gotta run off to Africa and Korea? Really? Now, when you go to the uh, average church, they'll tell you, well, you know, Jesus spoke in parables because, you know, these were simple people. They were farmers, they weren't, you know, educated in in the synagogues. You know, they didn't go to Bible college, so they were just simple farmers, and they didn't understand, you know, simple stuff. So the Lord spoke to them in parables, in an earthly f example, to so that they could have a heavenly understanding. I've heard preachers teach that garbage. But what did Jesus say? Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, who? To Jesus. And they said, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered Jesus and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. He spoke in parables to hide it from those that were unworthy, or perhaps they were of the satanic seed line. Genesis 6, the Canaanites. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. For in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, their spiritual eyes, I guess, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see in your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not, see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. So the apostles are learning things that even the prophets didn't even know. Isn't that wonderful? So, so what about these unbelievers and Satanists teaching all this garbage? You know, the Bible having errors. Well, you know, I went to Bible college for six years. I have an earned master's degree. 
And I never really learned Greek or Hebrew. I've done, you know, some... I've done some word studies, but I've never really tried to learn the language, the alphabet. You know, uh, I mean, sometimes I wish I, when I was a young child, I wish I'd have stayed with the Lord when I was in middle school, because I probably would have been a, I would have probably had a working knowledge of Greek, but I didn't. No, instead I wanted to live a life of sin which I did very well. And praise the Lord, he pulled me out of the, the mud hole. So, but yet, if you, you know, what books do we use to learn Greek and Hebrew? For example, there's a theological dictionary of the New Testament. It's a 10-volume set by a guy named Gerhard Kittel, K-I-T-T-E-L. This is an absolute standard in Bible cemeteries. Uh, well, some people call them seminaries. Did you know that Kittel was an early member of the Nazi party, a supporter of Hitler? And if you think Hitler was a, uh, a Christian, um, well, think again. You know, name one Bible college in Germany that Hitler started. I can't think of any. Yes, he used to have the Catholic priests come and bless the troops before they went off to kill. Uh, what can I tell you? But, you know, it's like uh, all politicians. They don't have real faith. Oh, they'll pander to the religious people. But then when it comes right down to it, they'll do the opposite of whatever the Bible says when the time comes for the votes. Uh, their votes in the Congress or whatever, the Senate or representatives or what have you. They don't have any faith. It's all a show to them. And besides, uh, Hitler purposely lost the war for Germany. I mean, I, I don't know how many of you know it, but the Battle of Dunkirk, the evacuation of Dunkirk, uh, England and France evacuated was given three days to evacuate a third of a million troops. That was almost the entire British Expeditionary Army. If Hitler told the army to stand down, and he says, let the Air Force do their job, and then he told the Air Force, let the army do their job. He gave England three days to evacuate their entire army that would later be the ones that stood against Rommel down the Desert Fox, General Erwin Rommel down in uh, North Africa. And that was one of uh, Germany's big downfalls, as they didn't have oil. Well, if they would have went down to Northern Africa, they would have had oil. But And, uh, you know, that's the thing. Hitler let that army was what opposed Rommel. That army would not have existed had they um, captured those troops. They didn't have to kill them. They could have captured them. And, you know, Hitler was, Hitler was no Christian. If Hitler was a Christian doing God's will, Germany would have won World War II, my opinion. You know, but why do the wicked hate Germany so much? Well, guess what? Germany invented the printing press. What was the first book printed on the printing press? Bibles. Germany was the land of Martin Luther and the Reformation. And if you look at the prophecies of Judah, the king, the tribe of the kings, almost all royal uh, royalty in Europe were of Germanic extraction. In World War I, the king of England... The king of Germany and the king of Russia were cousins. They were all related to each other. And the, uh, if you know anything about your history, uh, World War I was started supposedly by a Serbian nationalist shooting Archduke Francis Ferdinand. Well, that Serbian nationalist, guess what tribe he was of? He was very co-sure. Yeah. 
That was the excuse for starting the World War I, where they wiped out millions of Germans in World War I and World War II. Just wiped them out. So, Kittle, no thank you. I don't want to read an occultic Nazi uh, Bible dictionary of the New Testament. You know, I, I just don't believe it. I don't want to read a lexicon from a guy that doesn't even believe that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. So before we start using these lexicons or word dictionaries to understand what these words mean, maybe we should find out what these authors believe. I mean, really, do we want to learn Greek from a Nazi or a believer like Martin Luther, as flawed as he might be? There's another lexicon by uh, the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon. Uh, Briggs, he was a man. He taught that mess the messianic predictions of the Bible has not and cannot be fulfilled. Impossible. In other words, Jesus is not the Christ. I mean, really? So we're going to dig into Bible dictionaries? And a lot of people like the Strong's Concordance because it has a Hebrew and a Greek dictionary. Uh, but you know what? The one from the 70s and the 80s is different than the new ones. The, the publishers are changing the words. I had one from the, uh, the, the 80s. And then I saw I got another one and looked up some words and I noticed the words were different, the meanings. So they're changing things, which is not surprising. I mean, come on. Uh, the largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking word, Zondervan, has a parent company called HarperCollins that prints uh, gay porn, The Joy of Gay Sex, a how-to manual. So if you want to learn how to be a sodomite, buy the book. They also print the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. The largest printer of English Bibles in the world, parent company, prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. I mean, really? And you're going to trust their word definitions to correct the King James Bible? The people that the, uh, put together the King James Bible were scholars. And they were believers. King James was a believer. You should read his writings. Uh, the guy wrote a, a treatise on um, demonology. Uh, I, I, you know, this guy was a believer. And uh, Spain, which was Catholic at the time, was going to send a fleet, their fleet... So Spain wanted to stop uh, with the Pope, wanted to stop the printing of Bibles in English. And uh, they were going to invade England. And England didn't have a chance. I mean, Spain was the absolute premier power at the time. Uh, they had a huge fleet. Well, guess what? Uh, the Lord sent a storm and wrecked the Spanish fleet. And their army drowned. And that was the end of that. And the rest is history. We got the Bible in English. So... The Lord's hand was in that. Matter of fact, they even uh, made a coin that said, the Lord blew and the Spanish were scattered. I think I'm paraphrasing that, but you get the idea. So, personally, I think the King James is God's word. And like I said, if the Lord has no preserved word, then he is a failure and Satan wins. And, you know, if you think the Bible has errors, well... Hey, I'll give you the address of the Church of Satan and you could join them. Because let's face it, if God was unable to preserve his word, then Satan's the winner. But I read the book and uh, I read the last chapter and uh, I know how it ends. So, alrighty, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Light of the World Ministries, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world and the Father. 
In Jesus' precious name, amen.